Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Australian Report for the 5th of August. And um, as you know, we spoke yesterday about um, looking at this move here as uh, uh, possibly corrective because it's back above the 6,000 and I think we're on the right track here. What we're also looking for to help confirm this is five waves to the upside here. And it does appear that that is taking place. So that means that we should really be seeing uh, wave one to the upside here, wave two here, and then three, four, and five moving up here higher for this. Let's go take a closer look at this here. So just on the four hour chart, we were looking <clears throat> at this move here being an A and a B and a C wave here. Um, because it moved back above, not so much the move back above the level, that's one of the things, that's just the simplicity of it, but in a nutshell, it actually overlapped this first structure coming down here, which then forces this structure to become corrective in that nature. So um, what we talked about yesterday was that the move up through here, would it be an A and a B and a C wave here, and then move down from that point? Um, one of the things I didn't like about that was that... Um, wave one and wave uh, C here, or wave uh, A and wave C here didn't have any equality towards each other. So it appeared that um, that would be looking at a five wave structure moving to the upside. <clears throat> and if that's the case, then if we get five waves uh, in the opposite direction of the uh, trend here, that means that once this five waves is completed, then which will be like this here, and then we'll see an A, and a B and a C wave coming into here and then moving up from that point there. So it's going to give us a long trade opportunity. I'll put that in here because it does appear that this, well, uh, it does appear that this move down through here is, is corrective. And uh, also the S&P 500, if we just uh, take a look at that for one moment here. So what we're looking for the S&P is we're also looking at this being wave three top and wave four here, and then looking at one and two and three and four and five, finishing up around the, um, sorry, finishing up around the uh, 3,330 sort of area. So this is definitely not completed to the upside here. So today we should see this drift higher here. Um, and that of course is going to help the uh, Australian market move up too. So um, we need to see one more little move up through here. So let's just go in and take a closer look at, at this. So it looks a bit like this as wave one and two and three and four and five here, and then the ABC pattern here. So this will be a good trade through here. This will also be a possible trade in this space here as well. So um, let's just move in and take a closer look at this particular structure here. So on the 15 minute chart, I was thinking of it like this here with wave one here, which is pretty clear, wave two, this is in line with the US markets as well, then one and two and three and four and five for the third wave. <clears throat> A nice A, B and C for the fourth wave here. The fourth wave should pull back the 38.2% as long as it's sort of in that ballpark there. So it's already, you know, pulled below that. We're expecting the S&P 500 to continue to move to the upside as well. So um, you can pretty much, well, technically here, we can trade long from this point up to 6.1 or just above this high here for this. We do have five waves here and we do have a corrective wave here. Um, this does appear to be an A and a B and then uh, five waves down here for um, wave C of four. So that all looks quite good. If there's going to be any resistance here, it will be at the 50, 60% retracement level where it is now. So we'll just pop that in there. We're expecting the market to move through that, but that's the trouble spot there. So just, just really where you want to be going long from at this point. Um, could this wave four get any bigger and uglier? Uh, like having this as an A and a B and a C wave down back 
down to here? Yes, it can. Um, it's just that um, I felt that it would drift up based on the S&P 500 here and, and the NASDAQ in terms of one and two and three and four and five moving up here higher. So there's no reason uh, unless it's localized um, news that would, would uh, d destroy that structure. And yes, this could be an A and a B and a C wave to this particular point here, but everything's telling me that it's moving to the upside. So we can just keep the stop uh, under this low uh, here for that. And then you can look to build in with uh, expecting a move to take out these current highs here. I don't think the tick chart's going to give us much more uh, info than, than that. Let's just check, this is 100 ticks. So we're looking at wave one and two here, then one and two and three and four and five for the third wave uh, here, the ABC for the fourth wave here so that can just go back up here it can go over here and then we've got this wave uh wave one here coming into play here with an a and a b and a c for wave two very nice and then we're looking here at um wave one here so we've got one two three four five for one and two here and one two and three. so it's building in fact it shouldn't go below this low here so i talked about putting it below this low did i or somewhere yeah that one but it, technically it can go here as well so it's quite close here so wait for the market to open so you're not you're not you're not getting the off hour uh spread that, that cost you an arm and a leg um i mean cfds sound cheap um but they're actually they're not cheap cfds not in not in uh, not not in my sort of understanding, and perhaps I should just explain that as well because, you know, if you went to buy a futures contract, which would be basically this, with a CFD, you can have you know one point is one dollar so to speak. You can have a CFD that's also the same as the spy, which would be twenty five dollars um, a point. <coughs> but if I was buying a futures contract. Um, uh, a lot of people are paying too much for their futures contracts. You know, they might be paying. Uh, you know, $15 or something for either side or something like that. But I think that you, you should be able to push them for a $5, um, $5, if not a $3, uh, brokerage, if you've got a bit of volume there, but, um, even if it was five dollars <throat> so um i would buy one futures contract <clears throat> which would be 25 uh dollars a point so that would be five dollars in on one side and then to get out five dollars on the other side all right so that's ten dollars but if i went to buy the same amount with a with a cfd um so i'll have to buy 25 contracts um so i'll be paying even if it was a one point spread right that's $25 it's probably likely to be two point spread so that's $50 and then 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 you got the other side as well for that so then you've got $25 on dollars on one side if you got a one point spread and then 25 on the other side so that's $50 compared to $10 and then you've got your overnight financing which is based on the value so it's based on the on the price over here uh, so it's the RBA, RBA rate um, for, for the Australian market, of course. And then you've got um, whatever the provider is going to put on top of that. So it might be running at 2.5% or something. So you're paying, if the market's moving up, you're paying that, uh, that's getting, that's getting uh, charged every day. So that's really like a compound interest. Um, and as the market's going higher, you're getting charged at a higher price. So you've got that really high brokerage from CFD providers, and then you've got the compound interest as well. I mean, they've got it, and then they've got the house edge, of course, as well, because if you're trading short term, then you've got, um, you know, you and you're not quite sure what you're doing. Well, then you know you're going to be. Um, facing that as well. So there's a lot of headwind for a CFD trader. Alrighty, um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.